This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their Made in USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. It's the new Mini. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me in Munich at sort of this mini lounge, if you will. And uh, for the first time, I'm able to bring to you the brand new code name J01 electric Mini Cooper hardtop. Now, no secret, I'm a mini enthusiast and mini fan. And so I come from an enthusiast standpoint when I give you this review. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything we can know about the Mini Electric, the specs, the pricing, the details, the charging performance, the range. Of course, we'll go inside and outside talking about little design details, changes all around. I'll tell you a little bit about the model line structure between combustion and electric because this is actually kind of confusing and I've never seen this type of approach before. There's a lot to get into with the new Mini. It's an entirely new direction for the brand. They are also launching the new electric Countryman and Combustion Countryman alongside of this car right around the same time. So we are all Mini this time of year. It's going crazy over here. And now it's my full tour of the Mini electric hardtop. Strap in, let's get into it. Well, here it is, the new hardtop, and there's so much to get into with this vehicle. I think maybe just a look back on the history just briefly. Mini, of course, had classic minis. I used to daily drive a classic mini in high school, actually. It had the Union Jack on the roof. I've spoken about it a few times on this channel, and I just loved that car. I called it uh, Sir Alec after Sir Alec Isagonis, who was instrumental in the mini becoming the Mini. And, um, you know, there's been newer Minis since BMW brought the brand and relaunched it. It started with the R50 generation, R53, if you wanted the real spicy supercharged one. These were always great. I'm actually in the market to get one of those. I think it'd be fun to have a little supercharged Cooper S to blast around and just have some fun with. They're unbelievably inexpensive. And honestly, like once you know how to work in them, fairly reliable and hardy, they're great. And then they launched the turbocharged R56 generation. The standard car was naturally aspirated but the Cooper S version used a Peugeot engine that was unbelievably unreliable and was just not great um, but honestly they built so many cars of this R generation mini they also launched the Countryman with this one the Clubman and expanded into the Roadster and the Coupe and a whole bunch of other mini models and mini grew as a family outside of the original hardtop the following generation has been going on for a long time. The F56 generation Mini, this really had the most amount of BMW content on the inside we had seen up to this point. It used the new two liter engines that BMW had been using and honestly overall was a much more premium experience on the inside and outside, better build quality, less rattles, nice car, but I would argue not as fun as the minis of old. And now we are here with the new generation, the J chassis car, which is a fully electric bespoke from the ground up chassis. This car will not have a combustion engine in it. However, you will be able to buy a mini with a combustion engine that looks just like this one, but it's not this car. That is actually a continuation of the current platform that F56 generation Mini will go to the F66 generation. They're gonna wrap it in the same exterior as this, little changes here and there. I believe the hood will have the more traditional clamshell hood, a little bit more expensive to do. Nice little touches compared to the electric one, but it's going to be built on the same chassis as the outgoing model. So it's so confusing to me, and I think maybe to you guys right now, that you can buy the electric one and the combustion one soon, they will look the same, but they will have completely different platforms. Was it the right decision for Mini to go with a ground up battery electric platform for this car? Was it a right decision to say, let's continue combustion on the old one, or should they have just gone in all on electric and not even bothered to update the combustion ones? You tell me, but I'm not 100% sure what to make of all of this, but what we are focusing on in this video is this one, the battery electric Mini. Now. 
I just want to take you on a quick tour around it so you can see the back end, the side, the inside, get an idea of what we're talking about here. But we have the 18 inch wheels on this one, the biggest wheels. Come take a look on the inside here. I can show you, hold on, I have the key in my pocket, comfort access. Just come around over here to this side so I can show you in here, really nice interior. You can see totally updated, the new mini infotainment system, brand new high quality steering wheel, completely animal free as well. We'll do a deep dive on the interior in this video, of course. So I'm looking forward to showing you that and exploring it for myself. We'll talk about the charging performance. And here we have arguably the most controversial part of the car and honestly, the part of the car that I like the least. I don't know. It looks kind of cool when the lights light up though. Here, let me just click unlock and you'll see them do a little dance here. And then you have sort of a half union jack on either side. Looks okay to me when the lights are on, but traditional mini contrasting roof color. Love that. Of course you can spec them however you want, but I really like this over here. The new mini updated logo. Trunk space is very mini. <laughs> Nothing unusual or out of the ordinary here. Let's see, we do have a little bit of underfloor storage for a charging cable, first aid kit, subwoofer as an example, it seems to be. Then you have your, uh, you know, just charging cable here, which is just a Shuko plug. I don't know what the US cars will come with. And I'll talk about the plans for this car in America, of course, because it's a little bit interesting, the rollout. Since we're back here just showing trunk space, I just want to give you a quick tour here before we get into the details so we can check it off the list. If I can explain, let me put this headrest down. We'll fold this back seat down and now you have 800 liters of cargo space, uh, 200 liters when the rear seats are up. Has not been rated in cubic feet or whatever we use in the US. Not really a trunk space guy, but uh, I don't know. Alyssa, enough space for you? What do you think? Yes, she's nodding her head. Yes, all good. Okay, let's talk the details, the numbers, everything around when this car will make it to production, how it's gonna roll out and the versions that you can get it in. This, is of course the J01, which signifies the first car on this platform, which is a collaboration between BMW, again, who owns Mini, and Great Wall Motors in China. So this car is Chinese and it will be built in China. The combustion cars will still be built in Oxford that again, look the same, but use the older combustion platform, the F56 chassis, which will now be again, F66. This car will start production in November of this year, 2023. That's great. And they'll be launching, I believe, in European markets and Asian markets. The US will likely get this car. BMW hasn't confirmed, I think, one way or the other, but I'm fairly certain we are getting this just as a delayed launch. So that's a little bit disappointing that we're not getting it first, but honestly, bringing Chinese built cars into America is expensive. There's huge tariffs and it doesn't, um, you know, it's not the best business case, if you will, for this car to launch in the US. What could be interesting, and I don't think there's been any rumors of this, but I'm just thinking out loud. Wouldn't it be nice if Mini built this car at the Spartanburg plant in South Carolina, where they build all the BMW X5s and X3s and all the you know BMW X vehicles? Okay, they already have some manufacturing there. If they want this car to be high volume enough and competitive on price, that could be a way to do it. Okay, so we don't know when we'll get it in America, but at least we do know some European numbers and specs because not all of you guys live in the US. I think we actually are almost half European audience, something like this. Um, there will be three versions of this car. There will be the Mini Cooper Electric, the Mini Cooper S Electric, the SE, and the Mini Cooper JCW Electric. That one will be launching January of 2025 as start of production for the real spicy one. So the ones that will be coming to market first are the standard and the S. And I figured, you know what, maybe let me walk you through the pricing, the size, and the specs. And because we've been filming a lot of cars for the second time now on Out of Spec, I got a cheat sheet so I don't have to memorize everything. Okay, so the Mini Cooper E, the electric one, is 135 kilowatt front wheel drive peak power output, which is 184 horsepower. This is really normal for like the old Mini Cooper S's used to be in that 180 horsepower range. So definitely seeing the power go up, but also the weight and the size go up as well. So forgive us for just one moment, it's okay. 
um, we have uh, the Mini Cooper SE, which is 160 kilowatts of power output and 218 horsepower. If this car does come to the US, I think we're only going to get the S, just like with the Countryman that we will either have a video on or went up previously, that one we're only getting the S in that particular one. So that makes sense, 160 kilowatts, 218 horsepower, 6.7 seconds, zero to 60, very reasonable for a hot hatch, something like this. It's not as spicy as I would hope they would make it, but it leaves room for the JCW, which they're expecting maybe somewhere around 250 horsepower is what uh, outlets like Motoring File have reported on. So that could be interesting to see maybe something like this, something a little bit more spicy. Um, in terms of range, there are two battery pack sizes. The standard car, 40.7 kilowatt hours, which doesn't seem like much on initial first glance, a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, there's an existing Mini Cooper electric on the market today, the Cooper SE in the F56 generation. This only has like a 32 kilowatt hour battery pack and only 125 miles of range. So even the standard battery in the new car is going up eight kilowatt hours in usable capacity, which is great. Then, why am I really, I'm just jamming numbers down your throat right now, am I not? Uh, then the Cooper S, the spicy one, gets a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's what the JCW will get as well. Okay, so big battery, 54 kilowatt hours in a small car like this, that's great. Um, you know, that's actually 402 kilometers WLTP. I'm thinking more than 250 miles, somewhere around there, EPA cycle would be my guess. Um, or maybe 230, yeah, definitely over 200 miles in a small city car, that's great. And uh, yeah, okay, good. Charging speeds, all this good stuff. Come back here, let's explain. This is the charging port on the Mini Cooper Electric right back here on the passenger side. I'll just let you guys come on over so you can watch the opening action. So let's click unlock, let's open up the port. Boom, big miss already. Alyssa, do you know what it is? Dangle dangles. The dangles, yeah. Why couldn't they put the charging port that they have on the Countryman just over here? All right, because you have to get this and then it dangles all over the paint. Let me show you how it should be done. Come run over here with me really quick. Run, 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 run. We're at this mini lounge in Munich. It's a beautiful place. But this is how a charging port should be done on a car. And it is right here. Look at this, so much better. And they already do it on this model. Why wouldn't they just carry through the traditional BMW ones that's the best charging cover in the business. And then they put the worst charging cover in the business on the most important car. Makes no sense. Why, Mini? So anyway, uh, we'll see what happens when it launches in the US. Honestly, this car needs to launch with North American charging standard is my recommendation. Um, because again, we don't want to be relying on the failing charging networks that are out there in the public. Partner with Tesla, use the much better charging network at the time of this recording. Even Honda has partnered with Tesla, which would leave this car at a huge competitive disadvantage in terms of public charging if they don't put the North American charging port on this vehicle. DC fast charging performance, by the way, 75 kilowatt peak speeds in the small battery pack, 95 kilowatt peak speeds in the big battery pack. Doesn't sound like much. Again, 95 kilowatts for only a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, BMWs in the past have held this charging performance for a pretty good time. I mean, we've tested i7 on this channel. We've tested i3, i4, all of the BMW electric models, and they just hold their speed to at least 70% state of charge, 60% state of charge, something like this, and they just rock it along. So let's hope that is the same case here because Again, city car doesn't need to be great at the long road trip stuff, but it is gonna be fairly expensive. Minis are premium vehicles. And speaking of the price, just so I don't mess it up, in euros in this market, the car's starting price is 32,900 euros. So that would be like, what, $35,000, $36,000 US for a base car, not even the Cooper S. The one that I think we'll get in the US with the big battery and everything, that's $36,900. That seems actually not that big of a difference in price for a much larger battery pack, more power. I would go the Cooper S is my recommendation either way and faster charging speeds. So yeah, reasonable on the Cooper S, maybe quite an expensive base price also built in China at the moment, so no tax credits available if it were to come to the US and it was built in China. Um, we haven't discussed styling too much. 
personally love the front of it, really like it. This here I think is blazing blue is the communication color for this car. Looking beautiful, matrix LED headlights up front. There's a whole bunch of different startup sequences for the headlights as well. You can have the car do a little blink for you. You can have them just load in like they did here, just a little flash. Lots of different options here. There's actually, I think three or four different options you can have it light up with. And then we get to the grill, which is an eight, I guess, bended grill. I'm, I'm not a design guy. I think it looks fine. looks cool. Radar right up front. Interestingly, it has radar. It has camera. It has all the ability to do all the driver assistance stuff that we want, but no lane centering. So it has, you know, parking assistant. You can summon the car back and forth. You can use phone as a key. All these little cool technical details, but it won't do highway drive assist or lane assistant like the countryman will. Why? I don't know. Seems like a miss. Let's check out the interior because that's the most important part of this car. Um, actually, maybe before we do that, there's just a couple little details I want to show you different. No more plastic side arches around in this particular Mini, so you can see completely painted through all the way to the wheel. My personal opinion is it makes the car look slightly weaker, actually. There's not enough shoulder here. I thought the same thing with the Countryman, so really miss this wide stance of the older Minis. And no side scuttle anymore, no customizable side scuttle. So it's just this cleaner, more sculpted look. I spoke to the product manager of this car. He was really into it. He said, everyone loves the design, the styling, great. I don't disagree, but I think it got more serious and less fun. Just my impression of the car. Door handles, by the way, completely flushly mounted here. There's also a comfort access, so I can hit lock right there and I can put my hand underneath and it will unlock the car, you would think, but maybe because I just did it in quick succession. There we go. Interior completely animal free, like I mentioned, but I just want to draw your attention here to this door card. This is a very high quality fabric material throughout the vehicle. Also, it has, you know, normal window switches in the door, unlike the minis of old, which had the toggles in the center console. This is much more traditional very high quality feeling this is all straight from bmw of course power folding mirrors as you can see right there boom and unfold harman kardon sound system optional there's going to be four main trims for this vehicle in terms of option all the way from classic to a jcw style package and i think that's um interesting that's okay i mean minis have always been about personalization and customization and i'm glad that they're still letting you do this I'm lowering the seat all the way down, then I'll be putting it back. One thing a Mini has always done and always should do is make you feel, I should say, make a big person fit pretty nice on the inside. And that's me, I'm six foot one, quite large. Let's have a seat inside. Oh yes, I sit nice and down in the cabin. I can lower even the front seat even a little bit more. Tons and tons of headroom, oh my goodness crazy i can get the wheel all the way out oh the seating position the interior this is what i love about mini oh yeah the pedals feel pretty good as well um wow this is a nice interior i'm actually going to have Alyssa hop in the passenger seat if you don't mind and we can do a whole interior deep dive while we're here so join join me inside i can grab the door for you right here and Hop on in. How cool is this, Alyssa? It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. This material, I'm just going to kick the uh, AC on here a little bit, just get a little fan going. We, um, I'll walk you through this entire infotainment system. It's pretty cool. If you hadn't had a chance yet to watch our mini Countryman video, I highly encourage you to check that one out because we do a deep dive of this interior as well. Maybe I should go here and I can just put the fan to two. That way it doesn't get too loud. What do you think, Alyssa? That seems good. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, so a lot to dig in with this. We'll touch this last. I wanna to get to the hard points first. Steering wheel. Okay, I think the wheel itself is too thick, um, but I love the contrast stitch. I love the design. It's so much more premium than even a BMW wheel. This material, this animal free material is, has this smooth grain texture. This is a wheel you want to use every day. It's so great. Um, interestingly, it also has this little strap in the bottom here. If you can see this one, there's no third spoke in the wheel. It's this, 
I don't even know how to describe it, almost seatbelt like material that's here, something like this. But I think it's fairly uncomfortable. You see, I drive like this very often and just rubbing up against this center portion of the wheel, it's already leaving this impression in my finger right here. And um, I think it might be slightly too thin and it could get annoying over time, would be just my impression. Turn signals feel great. You can click up once to go three pedals, but they do stay all the way on. Unlike older minis, you have to then push them down. Just traditional um, door handle there. Nothing unusual, if you will. There is a head-up display as an option. Unfortunately, it is not one, just like we saw in the Countryman, it's not one that displays on the glass itself. It's sort of this um, you know, plastic screen up here. Personally, I think this is the wrong approach. I think it's a little bit awkward to have to look on this display and it's kind of distracting and definitely takes away from the design of the car rather than just having a head up display in the glass. But uh, it's possible that the angle of the windshield wouldn't support a traditional head up display, just something we were thinking and talking to the mini guys about. So maybe this is the best they could do. What's your impression of the head up display, Alyssa? Do you think it looks weird? huge heads up display person to begin with just because I think it's extremely distracting and it gets in my vision mm -hmm. uh, which is the purpose of it but I don't like it uh, but this one in particular yeah it would, it would get more annoying I mean uh, if, if it's just putting on the screen there why don't they just have a screen right why didn't they put a purpose? driver's display here yeah. um, I don't know very old school mini of course to have the main instrument cluster in the center of the car especially going back to the classic days where this P is is where your speed will be so you'll always have to look over here. Now that was a complaint when Model 3 launched. We also own a Model 3 and it has this central speed, but that speed is not so far off in the right. It's actually about here in the car. And so this is a good more few degrees over to the center of the vehicle that could be quite distracting. So my recommendation is if you're going to option a Mini, option it with the head-up display because you definitely don't want to be looking over here all the time. Now I, I, don't, I haven't driven the car, maybe it's a non-issue, but I think the more screens, the better. That seems like a worthwhile option. Uh, continuing on, there's actually an amazing roof in this car, huge glass roof, and it's got all this cool ambient lighting on the inside, and at night it must just look amazing and epic. We saw this with the BMW XM, had these roof lights in it, and I think this is so cool. Actually, if I just change the color of the interior uh, mode here just for a second, I'm gonna put it to vivid mode. I believe these will go red, so they've turned off. And now they've come, I don't know, orangey, reddish color. Very cool. We also have under lighting here by the glove box. I don't know what this one does. The switch, what is that? Adjusting the center air vent right here. How about that? Very cool. Um, and then, you know, just lighting everywhere. The, the light experience in this vehicle is very vibrant. It's very cool. And that's been a thing for many, really since the R56 generation had the color light adjustable, just like this here, actually, the old school lights up here in the center. That's great to see. Um, LED lights here that are touch sensitive. They go on and off, great. And we also have a glass roof that has a shade that comes all the way over but I don't believe it's a moving glass roof. I think once that's open all the way, this, yeah, no longer pops up and no ventilation either. So yeah, that piece of glass on the roof is fixed. There's also an interior camera, which you can use to take selfies with. We did that in the Mini Countryman. So again, check out that video. The size of the cabin, the feel of the seats. Again, this is a really highly spec sort of luxury one, if you will. This is the, um, the, the favorite spec or something like that. Anyway, it's a nice one. It's got all the good materials in it, the power seats. The seats are awesome. The seating position is great. The whole car just feels so happy, so high quality. It is one of those things that Mini has managed to do, which is to take a small car, but make it premium. And if you're thinking about the Mini buyer, like I know a lot of people that you know are just stretching into a Mini and that's their daily driver and they use it for everything. And a lot of those people really appreciate the nice touches. But then there's also another group of Mini buyer that this is their third or fourth car. They already have an X5 to get to the mountains on the weekends or a Model 3 to do you know whatever they're doing. This is the city runabout, the around town car. Yes, I know it's expensive for that. But again, there's a lot of Mini owners that use these as extra vehicles and they're used to a nice car and this no one will complain about the interior materials or quality what do you think Alyssa? no i think it's great it actually reminds me a lot of uh, the new louis vuitton coloring it's kind of a very similar beige in print 
Okay, very cool, yeah. And uh, you have this sort of seat belt, I don't know, latch uh, indent here in the dash. Just absolutely loving the overall design of the car. It's very, very cool. Uh, if we move down here to the center, from the center stack, you have all of your, your power on and off switch. You turn it to the right to turn on the car, turn it to the left to turn off the car. You have your mini experience modes here. I'll walk you through those in a minute. And you have your park button, reverse neutral drive, and braking mode here as well, which is really great. So that is all nice. Um, the experience drive modes are pretty cool. So you can go from vivid to timeless to personal. You can upload your own image in here and then balance. And this is like adjusting not just the driving performance of the vehicle, but also the experience of the sound system, the lighting, the interior, you know, letting the sun in. You can actually see some ambient lighting coming here on the dash, very similar to the Countryman, actually. You can cover the projections. They're projected from right back here on the back side of the screen. There's some LED projectors there. I think it's a great idea. The whole car feels great, looks great. It's awesome. In terms of storage capacity, um, it's quite dark down in here, but there's two USB-C ports. Honestly, they do have some ambient lighting. I think they may have needed more under here, but it's okay. Really cool cup holder design, but not adaptive at all. What I mean by that is if you put a small cup in here, it's just going to fall out. If you put a big cup in there, well, maybe it would fit, but there doesn't seem to be any of those rubber bumpers or plastic things to squeeze in the drink. So I think these cup holders in real life are actually going to kind of suck. What do you think, Alyssa? Yeah, that's a terrible design. That's not good. <laughs> not a good cup holder. It looks great but I don't think it'll be that functional. There's also a rail system here, so you can attach different accessories to it. Here we have like a little accessory holder and maybe Mini will make an accessory that works better for cup holders, I don't know. Um, there's also this little center armrest for the driver that looks very tacked on. Does it go forward? It doesn't move at all. It's just kind of tacked on there. That's weird. Better than not having it, but also there's enough room here, just put a nice, center armrest. Mini has always failed in the center armrest department. I say this as a Mini enthusiast. They've all sucked. They've all broken. And this one's already like not even that hard mounted in there. You see how much it moves? So, hmm, not loving that. Another thing I'm not loving is the volume knob here. I do like the knob, but it feels very plasticky. And the the power logo, as an example, cannot can go away from being upright. I wish they just put a little circle in there or something, not this power switch. It also feels like it's going to get broken off if I push it too hard. I'm not sure if that's production representative or not, but yikes, that's not great. If buttons and knobs are going to be in a car, they need to be like these over here, which are so high quality and, and really quite firm. This one, not the same experience. Someone's got to make a sticker so that you can leave it like this and not go crazy from your OCD. But for all of you watching who are OCD, there you go. Back to the center position. Or is it one off? Oh, uh, it can't even go directly upright. It's either slightly left or slightly right. It's right in the middle. See, that's upright. You have to lock it a bit off center. Does that drive you nuts, Alyssa? It's not off center. It's not off center? No. Okay. <laughs> Interesting though, isn't it? Uh, let's take a look in the glove box right here. You can see very small glove box, small car to be expected. There we go. Um, okay, great. Well, loving the cabin, other than those few little niggles, ergonomically, everything works. The door is really sculpted out where my elbow can go, so I actually have some room to sort of stretch out, and it's very comfortable to put your elbow up here. Loving the look out from, like, my position here, and now we get into some of the options and design. For example, here we can go into our charging settings, and you can see we can set our charging limit. Mini recommends an 80% daily charging limit every single day and then you can of course set it down to as low as 20 percent this car is just over or just under 20 percent it looks like perhaps uh, we'll set it to 50 percent for them for storage you can come over here and you know manually precondition the battery pack if you want to by hitting this button right here now it's warming the battery or it will automatically activate with on route battery preconditioning to a high power charging station if you select it in the navigation which i highly recommend you do a um, few other things here you can set the loudness of the fans on the outside it's really a noise regulation thing for certain markets but i would just keep it unrestricted let the car cool your battery pack as much as possible and that shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, if we come back to the home button here, we can pull up all of our applications and you can see there's so many applications. 
this software right here is running Mini OS 9 and actually BMW iDrive 9 underneath. It's part of the Android open source project. It does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as you can see right here. And I really think this is a fantastic idea to not use a square screen, to use this OLED nine and a half inch wide screen here. Looking great. Love everything about this. The software seems to be awesome as well. Right now it's in German, of course. But um, yeah, like you have your interior camera, which is great. You have a full screen instrument cluster. Here we go. You have your power output, your battery state of charge. Honestly, this reminds me of old school mini. I also like how you can get your battery percentage there and there and your power output there and there. <laughs> Funny things with this car, maybe some fine tuning still needed, but overall just a very cool experience. You can change what you want as your base um, load. And again, we're in this sort of balance mode. Let's try a different one. Let's go to timeless mode. I believe this brings us back sort of retro themed, old school. They always have a little jingle when it comes up. And here it's very representative of like a certain generation of classic mini. I'm not actually sure which one offhand, but that's looking very nice as well. We can click the home button and again, choose different things to come up. There's also a huge focus on voice integration. And here's Spike. If you guys are longtime mini enthusiasts as me, you'll remember they had a whole um, you know, sort of mascot brand, which was Spike. And now here he is interpreted into the user interface. I think we actually have a Spike stuffed animal somewhere around the house, right, Alyssa? Yeah, if it hasn't gotten destroyed by the dogs. Yeah, hopefully the dogs haven't gotten to Spike while we're around, but yeah, just love this stuff. It's so great. Spotify built in. BMW's always done great with the newer software versions. And here, I think this is a huge step ahead. And so it's really, really great. Um, what I wanted to show you was actually the route planning. So let's type in Hamburg. Wait, why isn't it typing? Maybe we need to go here. Okay. Hamburg Deutschland. And we want to go. All right. So it's looking, it's thinking. You can see some lines some are coming up here. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five charging stops. We also have some options here. We're going to turn her voice off. And yeah, so you can have augmented view in the head-up display. Very, very cool to see all of this, of course. And there we go. So it does route planning, on-route battery preconditioning, plug and charge will come through an over-the-air software update, I believe, towards the beginning of next year. Crazy that the car couldn't launch with plug and charge capability. This is BMW, a leading automaker, a leading technical automaker. They should be. The car should launch with plug and charge on Ionity here in this market. I think almost inexcusable that it doesn't. Your impression, Alyssa? Yeah, you do have a big harp on that and I do think it, it should be, but if it's only works for one station, I feel like that's just kind of annoying in itself. It's so. their partner station. BMW says use Ionity. It should work perfectly on Ionity. I think this is just crazy that it doesn't. But yeah, I agree. I do harp on it and I'm probably harsher than I should be about those types of things. If this car comes to America, like I mentioned, it needs to have a North American charging standard port. Otherwise, you're at a competitive disadvantage. So the route planning works in here, which is great. We showed some other cool things that it can do uh, in the Mini Countryman video. But all in, all in all, here you have just some settings for your Mini sound. There's a whole bunch of sound in this car on and off. I would keep it off probably. I don't care how much effort they put into it. I want the pure sound that the car makes. And well, that is that. To adjust the temperature, which is really nice actually, you just touch warm or cold. I had some reservations about this, but now I think it's great. You also have three levels of heated steering wheel and three levels of heated seating. Really nicely done here. This is how you do infotainment system. Big props to the mini team here. I, I honestly can find no faults with this. This is the perfect infotainment system for almost the perfect little hot hatch, I would say. Now, the big question is, would you go for this or the GTI concept ID2 that we filmed the other day? Would I? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't get to sit inside of that, so I, I can't tell you. Right, yeah, we didn't sit inside of that one yet. I would say... Volkswagen has their work cut out for them if yeah. they're going to try and keep up with this. I mean, I think the pricing's a bit different though, isn't it? We don't know pricing for ID2. Yeah, it's, it's still too fictitious to, uh, to really give a good opinion on, but I like the interior of this a lot. Um, the space and the size, I mean, it's not really my kind of thing. Yeah, show sure everyone a, back here. I'm more 
of a two door or four door kind of gal than a, a two door, but it, it is like you said, um, your second or third car for most people and it should be just fine. Yep, agreed. Great. Well, that's the inside of the Mini. It's epic, I would say. The technical components here are slightly disappointing from a charging standpoint and also from a range standpoint. But if you look at it in the context of how the car will be used in the European market, especially like here in Munich, this is a huge improvement over the outgoing Mini, and it doesn't seem to cost that much more. So we have to give them some props there. I actually think value for dollar, this is a better value than the Countryman Electric, just on initial glance. But, um, you know, Mini is back and you can tell they are going so hardcore on this design, high quality touch points, really making you feel like your money is going to providing a th thoughtfully uh, provided experience on the inside and outside. Although I do think maybe the design on this one mm, could have been a little bit more interesting. It's very simple, very back to basics. Let's go outside. We'll wrap up the video and I'll share my final thoughts on the new electric. Well, there you guys go. Finally, I'm able to bring to you the new mini electric hardtop here in Cooper S electric trim. Honestly, they have knocked it out of the park with the interior of this car. Whoever did the interior team, props to you. That's incredible. Um, I think the styling team as with any Mini, it takes some time to get used to it. I've, every time a new Mini launches, I just go internally, oh no, they ruined it every single time. And then I go, I actually really like that one after a few months of letting it soak in. So here again, I hope that's the case, especially for the back end. I really hope that starts to grow on me, but I'm loving the circular headlights, the traditional lights up front. I'm actually really liking the technical specs and for a city EV, no question, this is more premium than any on the market today. And I think it's great. The big questions for me is, will they do a US production on this car or figure out a way to get it to the US? Because they kind of have said it is coming to America, just delayed as they sort out pricing and import tariffs and all of these things. I hope it can come. I know so many people that would buy this car, love this car and use it. Maybe even including me. The current Mini Electric is just a little bit too much money for a little bit too little range and value. You really only get about 100 miles on that car. Here you'd get almost double that and double the charging speed. So that is a really great uh, upgrade in my opinion. By the way, just to end the video, I'll show you the key here. It's quite plasticky, but it has this Mini logo embossed on the back here, which looks great. And you can see unlock trunk and then a special key that i believe you can program to do whatever you'd like i will lock the car here and we will end the video now thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video thanks for joining me for a full tour of the little mini electric um the mini doesn't take that much time to get around it because it's so small there's less to talk about but uh yeah lots to test here can't wait to do charging tests range tests road trips all the fun stuff around europe when we're able to we'll see you on another video soon bye bye